Please welcome Assistant Professor at Montclair State University School of Business, Nicole Bryan, Professor of Citizenship Law at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, Anna W. Shavers, and Director of Education and Scholarly Communications at Microsoft Research Connections, Rain Johnson. Welcome to all of you. Thank Thanks you. for being here. we got a lot to talk about. I understand you're going to fill us in on some technological crime fighting, really, that's happening as we turn the tables, really, on the tech-savvy world of human traffickers, right? This is a big deal. Yes. You, who wants to tackle it first? So I think if you, if, if you look at it, it's a $32 billion industry today. Yeah. And a lot of people, especially in America, we think that doesn't happen here. Our, our minors, our children are not being sex trafficked. That's something that happens in another country. And it's a huge issue here. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is there's a lot of anecdotal stories like what happened on Facebook or what happened on Craigslist or what happened mm -hmm. on this technology site. But there's not a lot of deep technical research, not research done by the top researchers around the, the world looking at it rigorously to really understand, does technology enable it and make it worse, mm -hmm. or can it stop it and maybe eradicate it? And so that's what our project's really about, is really looking at how are Johns, how are pimps using technology, how are some of the young victims using it themselves, unfortunately, and how do we understand the whole scope of how big the problem is? Well, without being too confusing, it's ultimately trying to use technology to fight criminals' use of technology, right? Absolutely. Uh, as Rain said, this is really focusing on commercial sexual exploitation of children. And so how is technology used to facilitate this exploitation of children? Um, there are various guesses about how many people are actually involved in this and how they get involved, how they use technology, and Microsoft is helping us to try to figure out some of these hard questions. Now, Nicole and Anna, I want to start with you guys. I want you to take us through your proposal. But first, Anna, I got to ask, you're, you know, a law professor. Yes. Nicole, a business professor. So how do you get interested in a project, you know, funded by tech, really? Well, I come at the human trafficking uh, examinations through my focus on immigration and international gender issues. Mm -hmm. So my first interest in human trafficking was from the cross-border perspective. How many people are being brought into the United States to uh, be used in a way in prostitution primarily because I focus on issues involving women and children and how they're being used. At our university, we have a conference now in its fourth year, interdisciplinary conference, and I'm a member of that conference planning team where we focus generally on the issues of human trafficking. And what about you? I mean, this wasn't the obvious way for you to go with your profession, but you're, you, you're using it, and why did this inspire you? Yes, absolutely. Um, like Anna, we, we also look at human trafficking from a multidisciplinary perspective. And I think what we can say is for sure in the global era, with the context of globalization, we see more and more trafficking happening at home and abroad. And how, how business is involved, um, human trafficking, as we know, has devastating consequences. And it's not something that NGOs and governments can tackle on their own. Uh, businesses can get involved, corporations can get involved, and especially uh, companies, leaders like Microsoft. Um, it's a matter really combating human trafficking is a matter of corporate social responsibility and uh, how we see the role of Microsoft in helping us uh, do this research is really to figure out uh, what are the next steps in terms of how to tackle it. And this is ultimately evolving, you know, through the use of technology, right? Yes. Um, specifically, our project in looking at technology is to first see if we can come up with some terminology, clandestine language that's used in technology uh, for the users of these children to find them and for children maybe even to put their, own, their names, et cetera, uh, make themselves accessible. And what we're going to do is try to look at the users as well as the children being used and figure out how they actually access uh, the Internet and other forms mm -hmm. of technology, specifically looking at online advertising uh, to get these two groups of people together. All right, so specifically, is that what your team's going to be tackling? Yes, we're going to first interview Johns, mm -hmm. um, uh, primarily men that have accessed technology in some way, at least interview them to find out if they use technology and how they used it, but also through the cooperation of law enforcement agencies, talk to some of the children and people who are now adults who were children at the time, and how they use technology to make connections with these individuals, mm -hmm. and then try to determine what this language is. Uh, you might remember, for example, 
uh, there was a big campaign against Craigslist mm -hmm. to try to get them uh, to not facilitate this advertising. And they no longer do this, as I understand it. But there are other uh, ISP providers, website providers, mm -hmm. that have also been accused of this. And many of them have the response that they have a ban against using their technology for these purposes, but there's no way for them to tell that these are actually being used in this way. So we believe that if we can get the language that's being used and then develop software that can be given or to uh, maybe even sold, I suppose, to the ISP providers, the website providers, and also be used by law enforcement to determine what looks like maybe innocent language, but language that's being used to facilitate this market. And so obviously one of the big hurdles in all of this is getting the participation. Are the Johns really willing to help? Well, we're doing, uh, in cooperation with uh, an organization that sponsored us, that uh, had a study sponsored by the Department of Justice, where they have uh, made contacts with over 40 John schools around the country. And they're going to help us to contact these uh, various John schools, and we'll see how willing they are. We don't quite know yet, but that's one of the things that we'll be finding out. And you're sort of talking about the language and sort of this, you know, code. And so, you know, what ultimately will come of cracking the code? Well, the two main things are to help law enforcement detect mm -hmm. when there is use of technology for this purpose, but also to help uh, online advertising, people that own, own the online advertising to detect when their systems are being used in this way right. and then they won't be able to say they can no longer tell that their systems had this purpose. Okay. So you guys said you, your project has two stages. Walk us through. Sure, absolutely. Uh, in the first stage, our project is, is similar to Anna's but also different in some mm -hmm. important ways. We're trying to understand what is the overall mindset that John Z is when they approach the search process and mm -hmm. how they're looking for victims. Are they starting offline and then going online? Right. What, what's the role of network technologies in that? Um, and, and that really requires in-depth interviews among Johns, primary research among Johns, to find out where their head is and, and how they go about this. And then the second component involves an analysis of chat rooms and other uh, pieces of technology that Johns use, whether they're looking for information on how to mm -hmm. find a victim or actually providing uh, information on reviewing victims and these kinds of things. Um, so overall, how that universe uh, is, is operating and how we can understand it in order to actually uh, potentially intervene or at least understand it better so that we can uh, create tools and solutions that would help crack you know, the code on combating it. Well, and it sounds like you got, there's a lot of similarities in your yes. projects, but a lot of key differences as well, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, one of the key differences is we're specifically looking at the overall mindset and then the search process and, and you know, how network technologies are involved in that uh, through primary research among John's schools, but then also outside of John's schools. So John's mm -hmm. that go to John's schools as well as those outside, including the, the uh, let's say, uh, heavy offenders, those who specifically prey on children. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Well, the, you know, there's a lot to, to absorb here. Uh, and you guys are right now ultimately talking to largely a technical audience. Do you have any asks of the viewers? Well, I suppose the most important thing is uh, if we are able to get this information, then the next step would be to conceptualize this software that can be used by law enforcement and also by the online providers. And so what can we do with this data that we actually mm -hmm. get? Uh, is it going to be valuable to create this kind of software? And I know that there have been various projects, especially in the United States, where they've approached this from a different angle. And so maybe people have even thought about how you can use coded language uh, mm -hmm. to develop the software that we'll be trying to develop eventually. Rain, what do you think? Well, I think the thing about technology and the internet today is that um, there's a feeling of anonymity. Mm -hmm. And because of that anonymity, more and more of our Johns are going online mm -hmm. to, to find young, young uh, women and young men. But then at the same time, we know that everybody online has a footprint. Mm -hmm. 
And so based on this great research that we get from these folks, can we get the best machine learning, the best privacy, cryptography researchers out there helping us go, okay, so if we know this language, we know this information, how can we detect the footprint? Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of information can we give? How can we do this smart on the back end to, to help stop this? And I look at it, the second thing too is really from a policy perspective. So now that we understand these things, we've got some processes put in place, we've done some things to really disrupt the technology. Can we help give government some policies that mm -hmm. they need to pass to really help enable uh, this to be eradicated? Now, obviously, the you know the human trafficking is at the forefront of what we're talking about. But it seems like what you're saying too is is this is the kind of thing is useful for you know as you said this anonymity on the internet, this, these message boards and the bullying and the things that are really becoming problems because people think they can just sneak in. I'll just make up a fake name then I can just go do anything I want. There's sort of this living outside the law thing right now, but uh, you're sort of kind of collaboratively working to sort of change that slowly but surely, right? Absolutely, and trying to understand what we might think about is just innocuous kind of language. I know there's a popular television show where they talked about an online escort services for minors, and they talked about it as a social introduction service. Now that's sort of terminology that's used for simple dating sites, for example. But we want to find out if it's used in other ways uh, that facilitate this human trafficking. I think it's really important for us to remember that human trafficking specifically targets people who are vulnerable and marginalized. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that it does that beautifully, really, from the perspective of traffickers, is to use the internet and to use network technologies. And we want to understand how that can happen and actually stop that process. Well, and as you said, it's a two-way street with the, you know, anonymous nature of the people online. It's sort